I call on Government Order of the Day number one. Taxation, Residential Land Withholding Tax, GST on Online Services and Student Loans Bill, Committee Stage. I declare the House and Committee for consideration of the Taxation, Residential Land Withholding Tax, GST Online Services and Student Loans Bill. Mr Chairman. Mr Speaker. Members of the House and Committee on the Taxation, Residential Land Withholding Tax, GST and Online Services and Student Loan Bill. The question is that Part 1 stand part. Mr Chair. I call Stuart Nash. Thank you very much, Mr Chair. Mr Chair, this is a, this is a reasonably complex bill. It deals with a number of issues um, that the Labor Party feels quite strongly about. Uh, we're talking about in Part 1 the Student Loan Scheme Act 2011, but we're also going to be debating Income Tax Act changes Goods and Services Act changes, Tax Administration Act changes, as well as the title and clause commencement. As mentioned, there are a number of uh, Labor speakers who I know will take calls on this, on this technical bill because there are quite a lot of clauses uh, and quite a lot of concepts that do need explaining because the reason for this, Mr Chair, is there's quite a lot of relevance in this bill um, that, that, that impacts upon others outside of the standard stock standard tax practitioner bracket. Uh, what I would like to talk about first and foremost, Mr Speaker, is, uh, is charities. Now, the issue we're trying to solve here, Mr, um, uh, Mr Chair, is this, is this is part one, is that often what happens with students is they head off on an OE. They finish their studies, they have a student loan, but under the Student Loan Act, if a student with a student loan heads overseas, they must pay interest on that student loan. Uh, but, but, Mr Chair, what is allowed to happen is if a student is working for a registered charity for a, for a maximum time of 24 months, then what they are uh, classed as is, is, a, is still being domiciled in New Zealand. So even though they may head off, um, they do not have to pay interest on their student loan. Uh, but the problem we're trying to solve, Mr Chair, is that under the current law, charitable yep. organisations must be approved by Cabinet for the purposes of the student loan scheme interest write-off and, and listed in regulations. And what, happen, what can happen with this, Mr Chair, is by the time that goes through the approval process, the student is overseas, they've already accrued um, a whole lot of interest on their loan and they don't get full benefit. So what this Act does, Mr Chair, is it removes, uh, well, it, it basically removes the, um, the, the, uh, the need for Cabinet to, uh, to approve a charity. But what I will say, Mr Chair, which is quite interesting, is the level of disclosure required under this Act by the Commissioner for Charities. It is quite unusual compared to other pieces of legislation on the statute books when it comes to tax law. Um, I know, and this, this is, you know, for example, when I compare sections uh, 27, uh, this is 27 A, B, C, uh, D and E, this basically relates to um, what the Commissioner's responsibilities are uh, with regard to listing charities, what, what it quantifies a charity, uh, what, if, if the Commissioner can delist a charity, etc., etc. The regulations are quite prescriptive and the level of disclosure, Mr Chair, is quite onerous. In fact, Mr Chair, I suspect if we were to compare this to other pieces of tax legislation, like, for example, the legislation governing, just pull something out of there, overseas trusts. You don't go there. Stick no, no, to I, part one. No, absolutely, Mr Chair. But what I'm saying is that I think this is very good because what this is doing is it is requiring a level of disclosure that meets the requirements I think of the or, or meets the expectations of the general public of New Zealand because what we like to know with our tax law is that there is a level of transparency that can't be sort of uh, overridden or, um, or abused in any way, shape or form. And this is what this does, Mr Chair. Like I said, what it does is it takes the, the, the onus from Cabinet and gives it to the Commissioner. For example, a proposed new section 27B will prescribe the primary matters in which the Commissioner must be satisfied for listing a charity. <laughs> Excuse me. And that goes into quite a level of depth around charity law, um, 
uh, et cetera, et cetera, and there are a whole lot of requirements that must be met before uh, an entity is listed as a charity. We look at 27E, Mr Chair, and this is an application by an entity to be listed as a charity. So there's a process that every entity must go through before they seek the listing, which again is, is, um, is very transparent. Uh, it's out there, so organisations are left in no doubt as to what they must uh, do. But having said that, there is also a clause in here that says um, a commissioner may list a charity for tax purposes even if no application has been made or if, in fact, the Commissioner requires more information. So what this means is that a student travelling overseas to work for a charitable organisation will not be disadvantaged if that organisation has, at the point of, um, of registration or application, met all the requirements. Mr Chair, there are a number of clauses in here that I will talk on in a much greater level of depth, but I thought, first and foremost, uh, this, is, this is important because I know there are a lot of students out there who will seek to take advantage Paul, of this. Fletcher Tabuto. 